Howdy, it's me, Manic Mark, coming to you from the bunker system located underneath the yard fell found somewhere in the jungles of the Midwest. And today I'm coming to you with part two. I hope part one was okay. I realized that I went on too long. But part two, it'll, I'll be more brief. No, I won't. This is going to be horribly long. Anyway, this one's called the reflective reflection. It's reflecting on my reflectiveness today. Out of door things that I remember. Uh, a few videos back, the small things video, it got me to thinking about the moments that I had been out of doors that impressed me in my life. And I went, oh, I gotta say, you know, leave a comment or respond to the video with your, you know, your things too, like the things your parents said that you remember, or the outdoor things that you remember, because everybody's got, and it's, I find it interesting. It's, I don't mean to burp after. That doesn't show much class. I realize that. I don't know what it is. Coffee, just never mind. Number 10. Actually, there's more. There's like more. I ran out of numbers when I got the 10. I think there's 13. 13, that's not a lucky number. Maybe I shouldn't do this video. Oh, what the hell? I'm going to do it anyway. Playing in the dirt when I was a kid. I can remember when I was four years old, sitting outside, sitting in some dirt with the little trucks or something, running them around. And I can remember distinctly that far back, thinking how great this is, just to sit here in the dirt. And then when I turned five and I had to go to school, that's when life went to hell in a handbasket. Number nine. I don't need to go into that, right? Kindergarten, the, hor the horrors of kindergarten. I'm not going to go into that. Number nine, how caught... I lived across the street from a graveyard growing up. Some of you may know that. I used to go over there to play, right? Why? Because it was there. It was across the street. But I can distinctly remember how quiet and peaceful the graveyard was. I liked being over there because of that reason. Number eight, how warm... It's not number eight because I got 13. And I'm going to go down to zero and we have to go into negative numbers. Well, that's okay. How warm the water was in the river that ran through our city just past the discharge pipe from, 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 the, from the sewage plant, the city sewage plant. They get better. They get better. I, you think I'm just, but I remember that. And I don't even remember, I can remember years later thinking, oh my God, my friend Brian and I, we packed a lunch and we went on this giant adventure where we went down town to the river where the bridge was and got in the river and we decided to walk up the river as far as we could go, like explorers, okay? And where we stopped was the discharge pipe from the sewage. We had no idea. It wasn't years later, I thought. To, we barely made it home. And then we glowed for weeks. You know, we got filled full of heavy metals and toxins, then we just, never mind, we didn't glow, I'm just making it up. Number seven, Glass Beach in Cuba. I spent three weeks in Cuba. No, not because I was a terrorist suspect. This is way, way before there was any problems. And it, I don't even know if just regular people can go there anymore. Uh, but my roommate, his father in college, his father was a civilian officer in charge of the fuel depot there, and I went home with him for three weeks over Christmas in December. The weather's really nice there. And there, in, in Guantanamo Bay, there's one area, the way the, the, the current run, runs, apparently, the ocean and the bay, and ships were coming in, they would throw their trash off, I guess, the ships apparently, like glass and whatever. So this beach, beach has all this washed up broken glass on it, which is scoured, um, so it's not sharp, you know, I mean, it's been, anyway, but, and it was, so it's in the water and the sun comes in and it hits it and sparkles, it's just like all these different colors of glass. It's really, it was really an amazing thing. I just, uh, that's just stuck with me. Okay, number six, Smokies in the fall. I've got two Smoky stories. One is hiking, when you, if you do any backpacking, if you're not, do a lot of it, the first thing that strikes you when you're out in the woods for any length of time is that suddenly you're not, you know, you're not, you don't have your car, you, you don't have your, the, the stove and the bath, your shower and, and food and people around you. You kind of get disconnected and it's disconcerting because you're so used to being, you know, in, so, in society. 
so if you're in the woods and you're not accustomed to where you are, even though I had topographical maps, um, eventually, of course, anybody that's been in the woods long enough realizes that if you have topographical maps and you hike enough, you pretty much know where you're at all the time. You just get accustomed to knowing how far you can walk and you can judge the terrain you're in. And compare it to the topographical map and you know where you are. But at first you don't and it's kind of like you just get this feeling, especially if it's overcast, which it is a lot, it gets in, in the Smokies. Um, so you get this feeling of kind of like a, oppression, like you here you are and it's overcast and you kind of feel like, you know, weird about it. Anyway, so I was in that mood hiking, and it had been drizzling, and I came around a corner of a switchback or a curve in the trail, and there in this little little valley, still gray under the trees, was this strip of wild daisies. And because it was still kind of muted, all the collars had been muted, and I'd been in the rain and the drizzle for hours on end walking, not really kind of knowing where I was. And to come around the corner being in this mood and seeing these daisies, yellow daisies, like they were plugged in. It was just like they were so bright that they were plugged in and glowing. It was really cool. The next smoky story is being in the woods in the fall on a sunny day, or, uh, about probably mid-morning, walking through uh, skinny, very tall trees. So the woods was open, the sun was streaming through in shafts, and the, yellow, the trees had turned yellow, and the, and the leaves, there was a breeze, and the leaves were just were coming down all around us like snow. The, it, like they were, they were on fire, too. They were lit up by these st streaming shafts of sun, making this little pitter-patters that hit the ground. It was, a, it was amazing. It was an amazing moment. Blueberry Island in Canada. It, one trip I took was a canoe trip way up in the lake system in Canada. I can't remember the, the, the name of it right now. But there was an island in the middle of this lake that was smaller than my house. It was called Blueberry Island. And then there was just these little bushes with blueberries on them. And it was just and so you could get a fresh blueberry. That, that And we were stuck there for two days because of a really bad <clears throat> storm that came through. So that was just a kind of a neat kind of, a, you know, moment there. Anyway, howdy, I'm breaking into to this video because... I realized when I was reviewing it that there were, it was just lacking in visuals, and I wasn't really doing a really good job of dis dis descriptive. Um, so anyway, I just thought, what could I do? So I did a painting to put up on the screen. There it is, and uh, so it's got everything in it and parts that you haven't got to yet. It's got the. I just go over it real quick. It's got the. Um, the, the the restroom thing and um, the the plants in the Smokies um, the graveyard uh, the trees down in the Smokies playing it in a pile of dirt the rainbow that that was it was a double rainbow but it's symbolized by a single rainbow with the skull because it, it just didn't work out that's in there glass beach is down in there um, the lava tube dump is over here and the, the uh, flowers and the lava that I talk about up here, um, the light trying to get back to the car through that end, steam. What else? That's it. Oh, Blueberry Island down here at the bottom. So, um, ew, that's all the glue on the back. So I just did. I did a painting today, and and I and I fixed another painting. And they're just they just look fabulous. They're really. Uh, very nice, just good stuff. When I bought the house, and you've seen the valley, one of the first days I got up where it had been, a warm, moist day, and a, very, and a really cool night, and I opened the back door, the valley was completely full of fog, like it had snowed and filled up the whole valley with snow, it was that thick. That was just like a whoa moment, you're like, whoa. That was cool. Gotta hurry up. I, I realize this is dragging. A double rainbow in the valley, again behind the house. It rained, it was raining, and the sun was hitting, and, and there was a double rainbow that didn't go over the hillside, or it was in the valley. It was between the, the hills, in the valley. And it was the day before I got married to wife number one, and I took that as a, a very, and I've never seen another one like that. And I took it as a good omen, which it wasn't. 
Number one, before we go to negative numbers, going to Glacier Park and, and, and in the park, <clears throat> the federally, federally run park, and, and there's a restroom there, okay? And you know, if you're driving on a freeway and there's, wherever you stop at a restroom, you're not thinking like, is this gonna be a moment where you're gonna be, you know, one with nature? Well, outside. As I got done in the restroom and I went out, I'm sitting right with my back against the restroom. The restroom is in this little valley with this lake and this mountain in the background. I thought it was the most beautiful place, this restroom. <laughs> I was in the most beautiful spot in the world. It was an interesting contrast. Also in Montana, but in a, in a, in a, in a um, completely different area. I can't remember the name of the lake. It was It's on the map like as a fishing lake, okay. Uh, the, my friend and I, Mike, we went up, we, we went early in the morning to go fishing at this lake. So in Montana, you have these you know vast, wide open areas. That's why they call it big sky country, right? Because it's so flat and open in many areas, and you, there's a lot of sky. Apparent, you know. Anyway, so you, there's you're out there driving. It's flat, and then you come up on this lake that's nestled in this uh, uh, little up crop of, of mountains. You know, like they're bigger than hills, mountains. And he come up on we came up on it, and it was a very, very still, quiet morning, and the lake was like a mirror, a giant mirror, so it was reflecting the beautiful mountains, a beautiful sunrise, the mountains. but it got better because when we stopped, we were the only ones there. this was a long time ago. I'm sure there are a lot more people up there now, but we stopped and we got out, and there was no sound. I mean, no sound, no bugs, no wind, no people, nothing. It was so quiet. It's just hard to describe. It had stuck with me. Going to Hawaii. Oh, when I was younger, I went to a few places. I don't do that anymore because I can't fly without a gun now. You just get weird when you get older. What can I say? And the world changes. Anyway, it's not scary. I'm not scary. Jesus Christ. Cut all that out. You're getting to the end. Okay. Walking through a volcano crater in the morning when it was kind of rainy and drizzly and it was fog and you could barely hardly make out the path you kind of felt like maybe you're going to get lost you couldn't see the other side of the crater it's big okay uh, and it's like walking on the moon because it's all old lava like it's just kind of like a, a moonscape and there's steam coming up okay and there's these little tiny yellow and red flowers every now and then just growing up through this desolate you know you're closed in, it's the moon, and there are these little flowers, bright, brightly colored flowers. That's kind of cool. But I think the number one on my list actually would be the number negative three. Would be the evening in Hawaii, the same trip, where we f heard about the, uh, the parks people, the rangers, taking people on a, a tour to a lava dump in the sea at sunset. So we drove down there, and we got to walk over this lava, which was still warm. You could touch it. It was still warm, and there was steam coming up. And, it, and there were, you know, road signs sticking up through the lava. I, can't, I don't know when it went over the road. But anyway, they took us out all the way to the ocean of this black lava. And the sun was just setting, and the sun was sunset in Hawaii. is beautiful. And there was lava shooting out like the side of a cliff into the ocean. And you know, it's quiet, and, and you have the sound of the ocean, and the color of the, the lava steaming, and orange and flaming, and the sunset. That was really the most amazing time ever, I think, being in nature. And then it got dark, and you know, back in the day, you had those little mag lights. This, that's the only thing you could, we had. They had the little tiny, little, they weren't those really bright LED lights that we have now, those pocket flashlights that are so cool. It was, I could not see, we could not see, that, to get back, because there was no trail. The lava was black, it got pitch black.